I decided to do a really quick uh, lesson in how I paint leaves. I actually teach this live and I have video uh, lessons at Curious.com for how I make fabric leaves or how I paint leaves on fabric. And this isn't exactly the way I do it. This is just a quick and dirty way. So I'll show you that right now. I have uh, some, the white fabric that I use, it's a fine fabric, finely woven fabric. And I have a little spray bottle and I've got a little container here I'm using as a palette. And I have a round brush and this is a, this is a number 10. Works pretty well for this size. And I have Neo Color 2 Wax Pastels, you know, probably if you watch my videos that I really like those. I'm going to get my brush soaking wet and I'm going to take a dark color, brown or black, doesn't matter, you could do any color you like. And I'm going to get my paintbrush loaded up with the wax pastel. These are water soluble wax pastels. And then on dry fabric, I'm going to just put some dots, see some little marks. Because the fabric is dry, the pastel isn't going to go very far. Once it hits the fabric, it's pretty much going to stay. If I get more moisture on my brush, then it will bleed. You see how that moves? And I can make larger spots. Now I'm going to get that all wet and because it's pretty normally I would let this dry a little bit before I got more water on it because I don't want that to travel too much but usually once the fab when the fabric is dry and you hit it with this um, paint or, or wax pastel it won't move after that the wet ones or the ones that were more moist will travel a little bit more I'm, mo I'm moistening the fabric so that when I use the next wax pastel it will move very easily on that fabric I'm inside a little container. It would be better to not be inside something to do this. And it doesn't move on the dry very much, but it does where it's wet. I'm going to pick up another color. Just pull it across there, blend it in with the other color. Sometimes I use my finger to move it around a little bit. I'll get this a little bit more damp. And on this side, I think I'll throw a orange in there. If there's anything in, like this container has little bumps from where there's recycle emblem and stuff, those will be like a rubbing. So if those are under there, realize that they're going to make a mark. If the fabric folds a little, it'll make a mark. But I think that's all what makes this really a neat technique with the wax pastels. And I'm just going to blend that a little bit. I think this is a little bit too green for me. I'm going to throw a little brown on there. Spritz a little more water. You can use the brush again. brush has the brown in it, remember, so it's going to dull that. Then I'm just going to let that dry or use a heat gun on it, heat tool on it to dry it. My leaf fabric's all dry, but I have to tell you that I had some technical errors going on. So this is new leaf fabric, and my pieces are new because I went ahead and put this one together, not realizing I wasn't filming. So I have my leaf fabric. It's all dry. You may have noticed that I had it doubled in here. <clears throat> that was so it would fit, but actually I can make softer leaves out of that same piece of fabric. So I'm going to take it out, and if you feel comfortable, you can just cut leaf shapes out of it. If not, you can take a marker or even a pencil and draw leaf shapes. You can cut out a piece of cardboard or something uh, thin, actually cardstock, something thin, and draw the leaf on that and use it as a template or a pattern. And then I just cut them out. If you're doing something that's a little more like an illustrated type project, you can leave the, the black lines. I'm using really sharp curved scissors. I like them best. 
but I'm not worrying too much about the lines. And I'd clean that up a little bit to get the black off of there. But as you can see, it makes a really pretty little leaf. I'm not going to use that one for this project. I have some already prepared. Another thing I wanted to talk about in this uh, second one that I did is that I put beads in the center of the three that on the original piece I don't have beads in there and I decided to put beads in there. Instead of having the beads stand up as they do in the other two little flowers, I went ahead and started the same way in that I started from the back of the little felt cups. And then I come up in the center of the bead. This is this is the bead, and we're going to pretend that it's inside a felt cup. And I come up in the center from underneath, and then I just go across and go down, and then I come back under and into the center and go across. And so I'm just building out spokes, as many or as few as you like. And that way it's a little bit more decorative, and the bead is flat instead of standing up. Okay, so now I have another envelope and it's all prepared and ready to go. I have Artist Gel Medium. This happens to be matte. I have some tweezers that helps me hold these and the same tweezers I used to the locking ones for making the the uh, felted, melted felted beads, uh, excuse me, cups. And I have a little craft stick. So you can, and it's a good idea maybe, I'm not gonna do it for this one because I've made a few, but you can lay your pieces all out and then take a picture with your phone or camera and use that for reference when you actually go to glue them down. You could use other glues. Uh, I like to use Artist Gel Medium. It's a little better for artwork. And I can look at my original one as reference if I want, but I don't want it to look exactly like that. Just kind of want a nice composition. So I like to start with maybe a leaf. And you can put the gel medium on both the leaf and the fabric uh, envelope, but because it's fabric, it tends to soak in better than if it were laying, was laying on paper. So it's enough to just put it on that one, um, one element. Have some wipes or some paper, damp paper towel is good for this project. And you can go ahead and start with the little bead flowers but I'm going to go ahead and just use some, some of the leaves here. And I am going to take, put a little bit of medium on the end of my stick and then grab the center bead. And I'm not going to be too matchy-matchy with this other one. In fact, I'm going to not look at that for now so that I can come up with a design a little more original than the first one. And these are my center beads. Don't want them right across from each other. But I also want to remember to leave this little flap open when I set the outside. I have, these are barely two different colors, but you can see that they are two different colors in my beads, so I try to keep them separate so I know that the darker ones go with the darker center. Wouldn't have to do that. And I want to make sure that there's room for setting them next to each other here. And also, it's okay if the gel medium gets on the side. I know if the center is larger than the petals, the center that holds the beads, I make it larger because I like to put more beads in it. But if you do that, you need to realize that your petals are going to have a little space in between them. If you make it smaller, they'll be tight together. That's a little too generous, so I'm going to just take my fingernail and wipe that out of there. 
taking off the tweezers every once in a while if they get gel medium on them. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to select another leaf. I think one of these lighter ones, maybe. And you can check both sides of your leaves. This side's actually better. And lay it about there. Looks good to me. And now I'm going to take the three beads that the three felt cups that have the little beads in them and just put them around that and end of that leaf. As they start to dry you can check them again and then make sure that these little felt, melted felt cups are are standing up the way you want them to stand. And I think I'll go ahead and put these to I may even put another another leaf on there. Let's see. Let me try something out. We'll do a little auditioning here. That leaf feels a little too large. Although I like it because it's dark. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna just cut it down a teeny bit because I want it to be a little smaller. A little bit more. And I don't care that these are fraying. I love the idea this whole project is fabric and fiber. Hmm, maybe I want two leaves. I think that'll be pretty just like that. Whoops. Maybe hanging off a little bit. Oops. A little more gel. I'm feeling like that's a little too straight across from each other, so I'm going to just set it a little bit more at a diagonal. Scrape a little of that gel out. I could just keep going and I can see I'm thinking maybe another little tiny leaf. Maybe I'll cut it really small and see. Uh, sure. Why not? Changing your mind is sometimes good or just being flexible in your design. I like that. So we'll put a little gel on that. I'm pretty happy with that little design and we'll look at the others. So they're all a little different using the same elements, fabric for the envelopes with Tyrell Magic and then painted leaves that will all be different and original and the melted felt cups that have a little beading added to them. And because sometimes seasonal is extra fun, I've decided to use some more felt and make some little holly leaves. And then I made red cups and I put a bead that's not quite white, it's sort of iridescent. And I used it for a little reflection in those little cups. You could turn the cups over and use them so that they're rounded and put a bead to be the end of the little holly berry, but I thought it'd be a little more interesting to have them as little cups. Just another idea. 
and a fun way to use these different elements to make all fabric and fiber envelopes that are decorated. This is Anne. I hope that you enjoy this project and that you will give it a try. And if you do like it, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. Be sure and tap the bell so that you can get any upcoming videos that I make. I really appreciate you watching. Take care. Thanks. Bye.